three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, cannabis connoisseurs? Jessica here. You're watching Backdoor Marketing with Jessica. I'm your host, Jessica. All right, guys, so today we have Jamila Cooper. She is the um, assistant store manager for the Kai location in Falmouth, Jamaica. So, I'm sorry, for the... <laughs> Let's start that all over again. She is the assistant store manager for the Kingston location in Kingston, Jamaica. So I see Kaya here. What's up, guys? So we had a little bit of technical difficulties last week. We were postponed to this week, but we're super happy to be here. And I'm going to go ahead and accept Jamila. Please give a warm welcome to Jamila Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Jamila? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Finally, right? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I already kind of introduced you. You're the assistant store manager for the Kingston location, which is, I believe, the third location to open for Kaya, correct? Um, there's a third, yeah, we are the third location. So when did you start with them? I started in November 2019. Was I that started. when they opened? Uh, oh no, technical difficulties. <laughs> Are you there? We're freezing out a little bit. How are we doing? Uh, so in Kingston location opened December 19, 2019. Perfect. So, um, so let me ask you something. I would like to get your definition of Kaya. Uh, we've done a few of these videos already. We've done a few articles in the magazine explaining what Kaya is and what makes you guys different. Um, but if, if you could give a little bit of an introduction, I would love that. So what is Kaya for those of us in the U.S. that have never heard of Kaya before? Well, my interpretation of Kaya, um, it's a place where you didn't realize you were missing something until you actually came here. That's, that's the whole Kaya experience. Um, <laughs> it's just a really positive uh, home from home type of vibration. And everyone who comes here always wants to come back or they end up not wanting to go home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People just staying after hours, asking if they could spend the night. Yes. So Kaya is, it's, it's, you guys have really done something special, which I think is really cool because it's the history in the making, right? You guys are part of not just Jamaica's history, but the Caribbean's history. Like when you think of Jamaica, I mean, you can't think of Jamaica or reggae music without thinking of cannabis. It's so bred into the culture, you know? So Absolutely. it's, I think it's really surprising to a lot of people to realize that as heavily as, it, as it's been in the culture, it's not, it wasn't legal until 2015, I believe. So well, it's been guys, decriminalized. It's not legalized. Decriminalized. Okay, okay, so, but you're still able to have a social atmosphere, which I think is really cool. Yes. So outside of a dispensary, what else is Kaya? There's the dispensary and then you guys have several sections along with it. Tell me about We those. have two, well, we have three other outlets. So we have a pizza bar. We also have a regular drinks bar, what we call a square grouper. And we also have a cafe. And you guys have, so at the cafe, by the way, guys, they have, um, they have the Marley coffee and you guys are involved in the, with the Marley family as well, which I think is really cool. So it's not just history in the making, but giant, like the megalithic names in not just, not just reggae, but cannabis and Jamaican culture, which is really, really cool. <laughs> right? Thank I you. Mean, that's yes, it is. So how do you think uh, Kaya has sort of affected or changed the culture of cannabis in Jamaica? I think when you, you because of, um, well, f how would I put it? It's much more than just selling a product. We're also selling an experience. And that's rare that you find these days. People are in the business just only to make money, but we're very passionate about what we do. And that also reflects in our customer service. And it somehow affects the environment that, you know, the atmosphere. So it's, it's really a positive type of atmosphere and people really appreciate it. It's very yeah. relaxing. You know, we're 
situated in a very central location. So, you know, in the mornings you come, come to work, you see all of that traffic in the mornings and in the evening when everybody's going home. And then there is Kaya, this one stop to go just to relax. Some people come here to just get a breather, you know, from their everyday <laughs> life. Right. So it has been, a, I would say it's a positive, you know, for many people. Absolutely. In addition to the fact that we are selling medicinal marijuana. So there are many customers that come here to use the products, whether it's for their anxiety, their insomnia, or their depression. So it's, it's good. It's really good. I, so I was wondering about this. I'm, I'm wondering how much um, Kaya has helped to lift the stigma of cannabis as a negative thing, um, because I'm, I would assume that once you, once you introduce a social structure where people are able to hang out with each other and not just pick up your, your product and leave, but they can pick up their product, go to the bar, have a bite to eat, listen to the music, talk to their friends, hang out, um, even have an alcoholic beverage. And it's a social environment, right? That I would assume, I would just, I would just think that anybody who might have had any hesitation about you know, having, a, ha having a dispensary in their area, I would think that it would have eased their nerves and sort of put people, settled people's um, uh, hesitation about, about bringing cannabis into their neighborhood. Um, do you think that it's, it's made people more comfortable with the idea of cannabis? Absolutely. I think also what puts uh, many people at ease is the fact that you can't just walk into Kaya and just purchase. You do need a medical recommendation. So the doctor will ask you, what is your medical reason for using cannabis? You know, and um, from that has been implemented, I'm sure it has put, you know, quite a bit of ease. And of course, um, there are many doctors who are very open to alternative forms of medicine. Yeah. So yes, yes, there are. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about, um, what is the story behind the plane? <laughs> what is Kaya Airlines? Well, how would I put it? Um, <laughs> wow. I would say uh, the plane. Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, um, oh boy. So <laughs> back in the days. You know, there are many people in the States that needed to be medicated. And, you know, air freight was one of those methods, if you can put the pieces together. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were ahead of, I'll just say, they were ahead of their time. Yes. <laughs> yes, they were. That's awesome. That is awesome. So uh, tell me about the musical and artist influence that you have at Kaya, because like I said, it's a lot more than just um, medicinal marijuana. It's also um, even, even down to your pizza and the music and the culture and the artists that come by and the performers. So tell me a little bit about what is the, what is the attraction to, um, to Kaya from different artists? Um. We do mostly have um, reggae artists. Um, we do have dancehall, we have popcorn, we have, um, we have coffee, you know. Um, we have quite a bit of persons who come here, um, not just only to perform, because we had a Vanguish Life performance by popcorn. It was, it was dope. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, I think also the fact that um, the product that we sell, it's, we sell premium. It's the best, yeah. the best in Ireland. You know? So do they actually, do, do you have a fair amount of artists and musicians that hang out at Kaya? Yes, we do. That's, I mean, that right there is just sort of knowing that you're walking into a, a place that you can rub elbows with some of the bigger names in the industry and you know, share a pizza or a cocktail or a dab or whatever. Tell us about the dab bar, because I think that's really cool. It's a social experience, which is very cool. Tell us about the dab bar. Okay, so we, 
not many people may know this. Well, locals know this. We have the widest selections in not only strains, but also extracts. And How many do you have? Quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Very seasonal. We don't, have, we don't have all the strains um, in store all the time because these are strains. There's certain strains that do well de determined on the time of the year. Right. Um, but we have the widest selection of extracts. No, no other dispensary in Jamaica has that. So we also have an area in where people can actually dab. You know, we have the apparatus set up. You can come in um, and purchase a dab. We have a special three dabs for a really good price. And uh, people really come in and enjoy it. They're and you sit next to other people and do this, right? You don't go dab by yourself you like you can you sit well around. we have people that's assisting mm -hmm. so you actually have either a butt tender or a sales rep that actually helps with you know that whole process you know just taking then, the dab out and taking and the wax is it, out and is it social from there like if a few people are dabbing are they dabbing together sort of yes it is and we have in some cases, people get really impatient because someone is taking too long with the <laughs> their dabbing process. Yeah, imagine yes. that a stoner moving slow. <laughs> yeah. that is very cool. I love the I love the the social vibe, you know, because I think unfortunately in the United States and you know especially in California where I am, things are a little bit they're they're restricted, you know they are. So you go in and you get your product and you sort of leave, you know, but almost as a social experiment, I want, I, I feel so passionately about letting everybody know what you guys did and how successful it's been. Because people, I think, have the stigma that if they have a social environment, you know, with cannabis involved, that something bad's gonna happen. And you guys have an amazing track record. You know, I kind of find it really hard to believe that under the influence of marijuana that persons would be loud or boisterous or right. violent. I normally find that at a, a drinking bar. Yeah. Alcohol does that to you, but not so much marijuana. Most people yeah. are, you know, relaxed. You know, they have the munchies or, you know, they're kind of slow, but in most parts, <laughs> everyone is, is pretty chill. So the, the pros, everything, and the cons, people might take a little too long in the dab bar. <laughs> you can't ask for anything better than that. Right, that's like the biggest problem. You're doing pretty good. So let's talk about your musical act because I'm kind of excited about that. Who was your favorite act that you have seen at any of the Kai locations? Mm, I would say it's a tie between Coffee and Protege. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. When did they perform? Uh, well, no, Protege didn't perform, but um, actually none of them, but they are regular. I see them every, you know, every now and then. Um, who did perform was Popcorn. That and is cool. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> amazing. Popcorn, yes. awesome. So what do you guys have uh, coming up? I think I heard a little birdie say that you guys are planning on opening a fourth location. Yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> um where's it gonna be I, i'm not gonna spoil it as yet you guys will just have to wait wait damn it <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna spoil it as yet we're just gonna have to wait and see yeah can we know the location yet um the other location it's mobe Mo oh mobe yeah oh cool all right just kind of Put a pin in the map there. <laughs> so I think that um, here at Nuggle, I think that very, and they very soon, in the future, hopefully, um, going over to Jamaica and checking out all the kind of locations, sort of getting our own little, little taste of Jamaica, you know, really excited about that. Um, okay, so why do you think people call Kaya a home away from home? There's so many people online that I've read talking about the food and talking about the culture of Kaya, talking about the cannabis and, and throughout the consistent thing that I've seen is that it's a home away from home. What do you think it, it is about Kaya that makes people feel that way? Um, 
like I think we like we're not only selling a product, we're selling an experience. And because we're so authentic about what we do, it somehow gets ingrained with the whole atmosphere of Kaya. And it's also in the aesthetics of the place. It's not just concrete, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's we have a nice wooden deck, a nice wooden finish. Um we have a wonderful yard space, a backyard space. So people, are, when you go there, you're always chilling outside. You're mostly in the backyard. It do, that does kind of have like a, a home from home type of vibes. Yeah, almost like a backyard barbecue. Like, yeah, you know, that sounds so cool to me. Is it true you guys can fit like a thousand people, something like that at the, at the venues? Well, I, I, <laughs> a thousand people. I read online. I was searching online and somebody said that they could probably fit a thousand people in here. At the Kingston location? Or I don't know about the Kingston location, but Akaya. Um, well, at it's the Kingston location, the Kingston that would be really tight at the Kingston oh, okay. location. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that makes the, the Kingston location different from the other locations, would you say? Uh, what makes it so different? I think we have mostly uh, more locals coming to the Kingston location, more so than tourists. So we tend to cater to them a little differently. You know, you're, you have to be, you have to like cater depending on your, your target market. Right. Um, I think it's just where we're located and the geography of people that's there. I think that's really what's the difference because everywhere that, you know, that customers go, whether it's to the Kingston or the Draxel or the Farmont location, everything seems to be really uniform in the sense that it's laid back, you know, people relax, it's therapeutic. You all, yeah. for each location, everyone has this, the same thing to say. Ochi may be a little bit more relaxed because it's not in the city, which is really high paced and hectic. So right. I would say that's another difference that Kingston tend to be far much more going on, more hectic, more traffic. So what makes you so enthusiastic about working at Kaya? Well, I mean, you're, you're selling medical cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> What's Everybody has to be enthusiastic about. <laughs> it has been something consistently that I've seen from everybody that I have <laughs> spoken to at Kaya from all the locations, anybody that I've spoken to. I mean, we have our chat threads and everything, and everybody is so passionate and so excited about their location and their job and their title and what they do and mm -hmm. the people. And it's been so much about the people. What's the work environment like for you? <clears throat> Work environment. I mean, everyone is, is, um, we're like a family. Let's put it that way. We're like a family. You know, I think what people have to understand is that we're in an industry that for years and years and years, people were being locked up and yeah. criminalized for smoking marijuana. Right. So, so not be a part of the movement. It's, it's like history. You're part of history right now. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely a part of the history. I definitely, for anybody watching that um, would like to know some details on the history of Kaya, um, we wrote an article for Kaya, uh, for Nugwa Magazine, um, and it was an interview that I did with Bali, and uh, I gave a little bit of the history of, of Kaya and where he came from and his background, but it really is, like you were saying, a, that it's living history because really you guys were the first um, medical, legal medical, can medical dispensary in not right. just Jamaica, but in all the Caribbean. And on top of that, you're, you're performing almost a social experiment for the rest of us, because if it works for you, it would work anywhere, you know? And so not just, uh, are you guys making, making history right now, making, being the, uh, the one spearheading this sort of social experiment project, but also, um, it's really the future because it's not, you know, your, your steps ahead, you're definitely steps ahead of what we have going on here in the U S wow. you know, for sure, for sure. There's, it's such more of a social engagement 
and all of the things that I think people don't think that they can mix, you know, with the food and the alcohol and the lounging and stuff like that. Right now, um, it's anything social kind of gets the nudge very quickly um, where, um, and it's really just red tape, you know, but, um, but yeah, like I said, it's living history and also um, the future, which I think is very cool. Very cool. And I think you guys have done an amazing job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. Last thing I'm going to ask you, and I've asked everybody the same question, and I just want to know from your words, for those of us who have never been to Jamaica, who have always wanted to be in Jamaica, very high on my list, um, what does Jamaica feel like? What does Jamaica feel like? Hmm. That's a very interesting question because Jamaica is home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the same. Like, I'm asking you what California feels like. Um, yeah. It's home. It's home. Um, I don't think anywhere is as mystical as Jamaica. I'm sorry. Aww. No offense to anyone that's there. <laughs> It's home. I mean, when I travel and I'm away for an extended period of time, I can't wait to get back home. Yes. I really can't wait to get back home. You really have to, you have to get that experience. It's not so easy to put in words. You really have to come and see it for yourself, you know, because everyone's experience is completely different. But um, I'm in. I'm in. It, it definitely <laughs> is. I do find Jamaica to be a little bit more relaxed more so than anywhere else that I've been so far. Um, we do have a certain type of freedom and a cultural expression that it's not, not many other places have that. And I don't think many other places would describe their home as mystical. And the <laughs> fact that you describe your home as mystical is magical. So I think that is amazing. You know, and you guys no, can come to Jamaica and self-medicate with free of judgment. Come to Cairo oh, and self-medicate. We will welcome you with open, well, I can't say open arms. They're going to have hand right now. <laughs> but <laughs> someday, someday there will be open arms. <laughs> <laughs> but um, definitely, you have to put Cairo as a part of your Jamaican experience. So for those who are interested in coming to Jamaica, that's your, your one-stop, Cairo. Definitely. Absolutely. And I cannot wait to get there. I know that we have plans sort of in the works, in the making as we figure out this pandemic. But as soon as that green light goes on, man, I am there. I cannot wait to check out uh, all three of the locations. Hopefully we have a fourth by then. Um, and then got the, the aerial views of the waterfalls and the green lush land and then of the aerial of like the 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 territory of kaya it's just so cool like i just can't wait to see it so jamila thank you so much for joining me today thank and you for having me absolutely <laughs> you have been fantastic and guys if you missed the rest of this um interview you can always check it out it's going to be posted on ig but if you want to read the adjacent article with it we will be posting an article in um I believe a week from now. So you'll see you'll see this interview posted on Novel Magazine, and then you'll also be able to see the adjacent article with it. So, no further ado, Nuggleland, thank you so much for being here. I will be here this Friday, well, every Friday at four twenty <laughs> on at Nuggle Official, and I will see you guys later. Jamila, thank you again. I will see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>